One of my personal favorite things about the kingdom of heaven is that God did not create a group to join or just a congregation to be a part of or a club you gotta get into. Our citizenship actually rests in a family, the family of the kingdom of God. Matter of fact, and you can write this down, God's plan has always been family. So I'm gonna show this by taking you on a quick family timeline. And I just wanna point out, I drew this line all by myself freehand, thank you. So we're gonna take, go on a quick family timeline, revealing to us God's kingdom family plan and how our families are meant to actually be a reflection of this. So we begin with the created family. Genesis 1, bursting forth with all kinds of life. If you go read the first 25 verses, you'll notice it makes a point to say how each thing was created of its kind. Plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, sea creatures according to their kind, birds according to their kind, beasts, livestock, creeping things according to their kind. But then it gets to man. Time for a different kind. Genesis 1:26 stating, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. He's going to be of our kind, my kind. Kids are born in the likeness of their parents. We are created in the likeness of God. We bear His design, His, His God-likeness. At creation, everything was as it should be. God's son and daughter enjoying this home He had made for them, settling it, commanded to start a family in it. They were safe. They were full of purpose. They were with God. God's plan has always been family. But then time moves on to the broken family. Many of us know this story. Enter Genesis 3. The son and daughter choose to operate outside of the created family design. And with their fall, the image of God in them was marred and their relationship as children of God was damaged. They became outcasts from the garden, distanced from the presence of God, children of His wrath. This is the condition into which all human beings are now born. Ephesians 2, 3, calling us aliens and strangers in respect to God. So the entire Old Testament, you see this in humanity, a wandering around, we're grasping for glimpses of family once again, but you still see the family language used. The nation of Israel being referred to as God's firstborn, his chosen people in Exodus 4, verse 22. In Psalm 68, you see David referring to God in such beautiful terms that he is a father of the fatherless, protector of widows, that he settles the solitary in a home. King David still knew who God was meant to be for us and who we were meant to be to him, family. But the family was still broken. Then enter the shifting point of all humanity. The cross of Jesus Christ and the restored family. Genesis 4, excuse me, Galatians 4, 5 through 7 says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This passage preaches to us that it takes a perfect son to restore a broken family. The cross paid for our sin indeed. It made a way for us to get to heaven, absolutely. It got us out of death and offers us life, praise God. But I believe the heart of Jesus Christ and the power of the cross has one main goal and is to restore us to the family of God. Restore how? What did the restoration get us access to. And I'm going to point out three things very quickly from Galatians that shows us what we get in this restored family. Number one, we get adoption. You saw this all through 
Galatians, but when we receive salvation, we receive adoption. Jesus did more than get us out of hell. He brought us into a family, and it is in this divine family that we are saved and set free. Adoption literally means a placing of position. Jesus' payment positions you and I into a divine, powerful, unconditionally loving, peace-filled family. When you receive the restoring work of a perfect son, you do more than become a Christian. You become a son or daughter. The second thing it gets us is a new father. It says the Spirit was sent to us to cry out, Abba, Father. And the very definition of adoption is that you are chosen to leave one family in order to become a part of another one. Meaning from birth, you're a part of a family. And it's no different in the spiritual sense. Whether you believe in Jesus or not, you are a part of a family. God has a family plan, and a very real enemy has an alternate family plan. 1 John 3.10 says, By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Eesh. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. John 8 also talks about how Satan is the father of lies. And I just need y'all to hear me. If I have not submitted to the finished work of Jesus Christ, then I am still of my father, the devil. And his ways are only lies and emptiness. He is abusive and demeaning. He is controlling and shaming. But this new father, this heavenly father, he is kind. He is loving unconditionally so. This father could not stop loving you or love you less because you cannot go against who he cannot go against who he is. Romans 8 says that nothing can now separate us from his love. Song of Solomon says that his banner over you is love. There is never a time where the father does not love you, period. One of the greatest gifts of this new family is the father we get. Dads, this is why your role in the house is so important. You reflect, however imperfectly, the gift of a good dad that we have in heaven. As we live in exile, you are a flame of hope in your house of what we are ultimately headed toward. This good father chooses us, adopts us into his family, makes us his own, ultimately so we can get to the third thing we're restored to, and that is a beautiful inheritance. Did I spell that right? Inheritance, yes. A beautiful inheritance. When Paul writes the term adoption in Galatians, he's using a Roman term where they would adopt a grown man as heir to the family wealth. So when Galatians says that we are an heir with God, as Ephesians calls it, co-heirs with Christ, then we inherit whatever Jesus had access to. Whatever family you've been a part of, you are now in a family of great blessing. The peace Jesus had, it's yours. The power Jesus had, it's yours. The intimacy with the Father, yours. The confidence and identity, yours. One day, not only will that be open to us, it is all we will know. This family will not just be restored. It will one day be made perfect. Which leads to the final part of the timeline. One day, the timeline will end. And really extend into eternity with a perfect family. Revelation 7, 9 through 10 says that after this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. God's plan has always been family. Once again, this perfect son, Jesus Christ, will return and completely unite the family together perfectly. Every tribe, tongue, nation, a bunch of kids united by a perfect son centered around a loving father. This is the home we're headed toward. This is the home we now reflect. But listen, rest assured, the enemy also knows this is coming. This is why he still sows division in marriages like he did in the garden. This is why he pollutes the minds and hearts of parents to mistreat their children and for children to dishonor or disrespect their parents. This is why we may actually sometimes focus too much on our nuclear family and forget the diverse and beautiful family that we've been invited into. 
And this is why we keep fighting to do family the right way. In our marriages, in the way we parent, in the way we don't just make kids, but we make disciples. Hello, single and married people alike. The way we view one another as brothers and sisters above all else. God's plan has always been family. No matter your family situation, you have a beautiful family available to you in Jesus' name. Be encouraged, take heart, take delight. One day we will be children in exile no more.